to black people, African Americans. But not too much else is ever talked about. As for Thanksgiving, well, my dad, uh, my dad cooked. My dad loved to cook, and he would feed everybody. Anybody who came to the village, he, they would stay at our house. And for Thanksgiving, we looked at it as a way to celebrate not just America, but celebrate the family, celebrate who we are as a community, and bringing everybody together to be alive, to celebrate through food. And the fact that it was natives who helped the people survive that went those winters when they first moved here. And in that essence, it's about following our traditional values of caring for others, uh, making sure everybody has food to be able to live, not just for yourself. And Thanksgiving is about giving thanks, but also giving. Separate from your education in school about slavery and things, did you ever learn about some of these stories or some of this history through traditional or cultural knowledge? You mean the stories told by elders? Mm-hmm. Um, not very much. They wouldn't share it because they were told not to. The American period did a really good job of ensuring that this knowledge wasn't passed on. Not just subjugation, but the humiliation. Oh, your stories, oh, they're just stupid stories. It wasn't until Larry Matfei told the elders when I was in high school that they could share the stories with me because I was listening to them um, and trying to understand our history. You know, just the stories of little people, stories of wailing, stories of what we did to thrive in our environment. So those are things I only learned after high school. The victors write the history, and that's what we've been teaching, and we continue to teach it. Um, I really respect Dr. Lydia Black's work, but when um, you guys sent me that list of things to read, I went back to look at her work and reread her work because I read it when it first came out. And it made me realize that even our historical scholars gloss over the atrocities, whether they intentionally did it or unintentionally did it. That's something we have to go back and look at. What really happened? What are the facts? Not what were the people writing to glorify themselves. Oh, look how wonderful I am. I brought brought civilization to the natives. Oh, yes, I decimated 90% of the people, but oh, that we brought civilization. What happened and why? And what can we learn from that so we're not repeating ourselves again and again and again? And then as us as natives and native scholars, we have a responsibility to not only go through this, but start to ask questions about what is being written between the lines. How do we share that history? in a way that allows our community to move forward, not move backwards. Not be angry, be, well, yes, you're going to be angry, but move beyond the anger. Uh, move beyond that so that we're not having to relive this over and over and over. Um, so we can move forward. So the next generation go and say, yes, we understand that part of the history. Yes, it is horrible and horrific. Yes, we've learned from that. This is who we are now. How do we move forward? We remember that, we learn from it, but we move forward so that we can live now, not in anger, but um, in a way that helps us celebrate who we are. What do you strive to teach your daughters or the next generation about this history of slavery? Making sure that they know the history, that's the biggest thing. Know the facts and not just gloss over them. Know what happened, but also know how to move through that so that they're not having to live in that anger. Uh, Because we don't need that. It just holds us back. Finding ways to also educate non-natives about what happened. And the fact that that stuff is still being played out today. It has not stopped. We are still dealing with these generations of drama. 
that trauma that we deal with is passed on, as I was talking about. We continue to pass it on. And the only way we can change that is by not only acknowledging it, talking about it, but understanding that so we can move forward. If we keep teaching our children, we're going to repeat ourselves over and over and over. So teaching them about it. And I mean, I sort of feel sorry because I do think about it all the time and I talk to them. And they're like, oh, dad, you told me that already. I'm like, I know, but I'm still processing it too. You know, getting them to at least know about it, know the facts, so that when they are asked, they will be like, yes, I know that. This is what happened. And I understand those issues. But here's what I'm doing now. Here's who I am. Here's my culture. And here's how I celebrate who I am as a Sukhbit, as a Jew, as non native. <laughs> I say my advice to educators would be to take a deep breath because the history and the facts are ugly and they're painful. Um, and we end up reliving them as we talk about what happened and as we relearn about what happened uh, and then start to realize, wait a minute, we're still doing this to each other. How do we change this? So use this knowledge as a way to change this process. Nakbak Dr. Sven Hawkinson for sharing this difficult but important history with Kafin Kwak listeners. This episode was recorded for the film documentary titled The Forgotten Slavery of Our Ancestors, funded by a grant from the Southern Poverty Law Center through the Teaching Tolerance Program, created in partnership with Sea Stories and Channel Films. Be sure to follow us to stay in the loop on the release of our short film. The Kafin Kwak intro music was created by Jesse Darling. And the transition music for this episode is titled Ukut Skunit, provided by the Alutic Museum in Kodiak. I hope you all are staying alive in more ways than one this summer. I'm Alice Kaniglen, your host for Coffee and Quack, over and out. Sip on this, chew on that, tevra. <laughs>